und Servus hier in München. Ich bin Claudia Fröhling und ich sitze hier auf der VJAX 2012. Ähm, bei mir ist Martin Werburg von der London Java User Group. Hi Martin. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Yeah, very good. Um, Martin, um, you are the CTO of the London startup um, J Clarity. You co-lead um, the Java User Group with over 2,500 uh, 2, members. That's, that's a lot. Um, You're highly involved in the JCP. Your day must have more than 24 hours. How does it work? Uh, we, we have some special time machine technology in <laughs> London that uh, the people who are behind James Bond uh, <laughs> let us borrow from time to time. Uh, no, uh, we, we just don't sleep a lot at the moment, okay. but uh, there's a lot of important work to do. So, And we know it's, it's going to be time boxed. So. so where's the priority if you have to do something at JClarity and the JCP calls? Uh, the priority is, is probably J Clarity. Um, you know, w for anyone who's involved in a startup, they know it's a, it's a very, very busy, busy time. You spend 15, 18 hour days uh, trying to bootstrap a business. So that does take slight priority, but I guess we're quite lucky in that a lot of the interests we have with J Clarity do align with community interests as well in, in terms of enhancing the Java ecosystem. So. Quite often I can kill two birds with one stone, as it were. That's good. Um, about a year ago, the JCP, uh, Dr. JSR um, was born, an idea for the JCP that JAK members are encouraged to um, get involved in the JCP and in JSRs. Um, how did this idea start and how did the wor uh, first um, year work out? So it started because, like a lot of good developers, we were complaining about the standards we were being given to us by the, by the vendors in particular. And a lot of us had spent time either in the pub or in the cafe complaining. We would write blog posts, we would say things on Facebook and on Twitter, and saying, oh, the, you know, Sun is evil and Oracle is bad and they don't know what they're doing. And then we realized, well, instead of just complaining, perhaps we should actually help change the process itself. And it was more from a developer technical standpoint than necessarily worrying so much about, about the legal and uh, issues. Um, so our first focus was simply to have developer input into standards before they were ratified. So it, it's like having people involved in beta testing your software. It's, it's beta testing and, and being involved in a standard uh, up front. So that, that's how it started. We started with um, just some talks and some basic workshops to explain to the people in London what all of these acronyms meant because there's a lot of, uh, you know, J JCP, which is the Java Community Process, and a JSR, which is a specification request, and the list goes on and on. So it was first an education piece, and then we started running uh, practical hack days so we would download early versions of uh, reference implementations of standards and we would get a group of say 40 day-to-day -day developers and say hey here are some tasks we would like you to try and do with the standard and then get the feedback is it easy is it hard uh, etc and then off the back of that some of those developers became very interested in then actually helping work on the standard itself so it's kind of spread from there really Cool, so it's like a missionary um, you started. Yes, uh, we, we, we do joke about it being our, our small religious cult that we started in London. <laughs> nice. Um, also, congrats for being re-elected to the um, Java Executive Committee again. Thank you. Um, what are the challenges for the EC at the moment and how can a Java user group um, help? So the two main challenges we see and the reason why the JCP was seen as just being a, a rubber stamp body and there were some very public uh, re resignations by Apache and Doug Lee and, and other prominent people. Um, what one of the issues was is that there wasn't enough technical oversight on the standards themselves. So although a reasonable amount of investigation into legal and intellectual property was being made, the technical validation or whether it would actually really fit in the Java platform technically w wasn't being done strongly enough by the executive committee and its members so that has we, we believe we've helped change that there was certainly willingness of the vendors and other members to do that anyway um, but I think we certainly came in with that as our very strong agenda and we, we care about the tech uh, first and foremost the second thing on the IP front and on the legal front is that we as developers we need to have open access to standards so we are simply advocating very strongly that um, 
reference implementations and TCKs, which is what you need to uh, tick a standard and say, yes, it's, it's passed, are, are available open source or freely licensed to, to people like ourselves who are, at the end of the day, going to be the end, to end users of, of these standards. So that's probably the, the two major challenges still going forward. So And jcp.next version 3, which is what the whole executive committee is currently working on, is, is working on those two issues in, in particular actually at the moment. As you just mentioned, JCP Next, um, also a new idea after the whole, what you said, um, stuff going on in the last year is Oracle acquiring Sun and rubber stamp body and Apache uh, Software Foundation resigning. Um, is JCP Next um, the thing that can help in your opinion and why are there JCP Next 1, JCP Next 2 and 3? Yes, so the jcp.next uh, is, is the way for the community process to reform itself. So it itself has to go through these uh, formal Java specification requests in order to change yeah. itself, which is, it does seem very confusing, but this is the way that standards bodies tend to work. Um, it was incredibly vital that it went through this process in order to reinvigorate itself. Um, the Oracle Oracle buying Sun was, you know, it did it was a lot of upheaval for two years, and and things were very difficult for a time, but I think Oracle themselves also sensed that they wanted to reinvigorate the body and to make it relevant again. Um, otherwise, to be blunt, the pie doesn't grow any bigger, and and the relevance of Java decreases in the world, and, and that's bad for all the vendors. So, um, the reason why it was split into three. Uh, JSRs as it were is dealing with any legal or IP issues means that you have to get agreement from the lawyers and some of the vendors well all of the vendors in particular all have their own lawyers and so if anything is to be ratified then it has to be agreed by all the lawyers now quite often they can work together to speed up this process but any legal issue takes longer so the first reform we made was to simply have non-legal transparency made mandatory for any specification that was being created. So in the past a major complaint was that standards would be built in a smoke-filled room with a closed locked door and nobody knew what was going on. And this is very counter to how most of the development community works today in open source. So that was actually a very easy change to make and it was ratified very quickly um, because all the vendors agreed as well. You know, the software development has moved on from the 1980s and 1990s where people like Microsoft dominated with closed source. So that was an easy change to make. Um, the second change was simply to reduce the size of the executive committee. Um, everybody felt that there were simply too many people on the committee and with too many people decisions don't get made quickly enough. Um, so that's been reduced and there was also an aspect that Java uh, micro edition is now going to become part of Java the standard edition platform a as it were so there's now just going to be one Java and so there was no point in having two separate executive committees so that, that's that been merged so again that's been ratified the third one is the difficult one this is where we're now dealing with uh, intellectual property and patents and uh, legal flow um, and that is going to take some time because there are some long-standing thorny issues, you know, the reasons why Apache left, for example, uh, that have to be dealt with. So we're, we're not expecting this to happen quickly, but we know if we get it wrong, we impact the ecosystem for the next 5, 10, 15 years. So we're quite happy to take this one slowly. Yeah. So all the best for the next year. It all works out nice. Uh, one other topic, you had a keynote with Kirk Pepperdine today about Java and the machine. I saw Terminator on stage. Um, yeah, all about not forgetting hardware. And you had a nice phrase about um, mechanical sympathy. What would that be? So mechanical sympathy is actually a term we've stolen off a colleague in London. His name is Martin Thompson, so we'll give, give him the original credit. Um, basically, he, he argued, and, and we agree with him, that... Uh, quite a long time ago software developers had to be very careful to write their software to match exactly what the hardware was doing so some of us who are old enough will remember doing things like mapping the exact amount of characters that would fit into w where a hard drive would write just to make sure it worked you know as fast as it possibly could in the past 
probably 10 years Java developers haven't had to really think about that because hardware has been so fast that they've just gotten a free ride. Um, but because hardware has now changed, uh, Java developers are finding that they're no longer getting these free upgrades that they used to. And so they now have to go back and think about how Java interacts directly with the hardware again. And so the term mechanical sympathy, which is software working in harmony with hardware, is, is something that's being it's a very popular topic in the last couple of years. You'll, you'll see it around on the conference circuit, especially. Um, yeah. Well, thanks very much for your time. No and see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.